All right, we're live. You know what we got to do? I see some other people do it. They go live, and then they have like a one minute, like countdown and with the song and this and that. We gotta. I think we gotta get on that level now. We're we've done I think enough. So we're ready. I mean, yeah. Let me go see. So um, I have actually discovered. So people actually unfollow me. Oh, what the? Ooh, we got another person in. Ooh, who, who, is who, is it? It? who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Black hole, oh, man. Black hole left. Um, but yeah, no. So I've actually um. So someone actually said they unfollowed because they just get annoyed at the live notifications. But it's like you can turn off live notifications. You know that, right? There's like a yeah. setting. So it's like, and then I was thinking, I was like, I don't want anybody who's not smart enough to turn off their live notifications to even be a follower in the first place. It's just like you were, you were just. There's always, there's always two sides to every coin. Honestly, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's it like the the things that so many people get so sensitive about. Like, if I do this, then this will happen, or people, yeah. you know, leave me and I'll lose followers. And it's like you're just all you're doing is you're you're shifting it down to the people that are right for your audience, anyways. No, and I so, think that's right. So, hey, there's Matthew. Hey, Matthew. What's up? What's up? What's up, Matthew? Let's just wait. Okay, we got some viewers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been tough. It's, uh, how, how are things with you, man? Things are good. Busy, busy, busy. Uh, yeah, I think, and I've said it before on other lives, you know, we, I'm busier than I've ever been. Dude, this is the busiest I've ever been in my life in terms of work. I mean, look, yeah. I used to be worse busy in high school because you had like the 10 hours of school then wrestling practice and a commute but this right. is like product it is productive busy busy like so productive of my i need a new chair because i can't <laughs> no hey, what's up, Osama? What's up matthew 13 showing here nice to see you guys let me oh you know what i also go live on the company page let's see that um let's see that but uh yeah you know I'm right what? there with it's you fun. i had to i had to reinforce this chair because it was starting to yeah dude I gotta get some chair because, dude good chairs cost money man i was looking like a good chair is like a thousand bucks right if yeah you don't want like a I mean, this one was good when i bought it but it's just i've had it for six or seven years now yeah no, so it just goes using it every day it, they start to break down no that's just how it is um hey what's up, nice to see you nice to see you um introduce yourself in the audience and you know we'll we'll slowly if you have any questions related to networking please feel free to look uh what's up indra nice to see you we miss you too elizabeth uh let's kind of see who's on the company page i, I just wish it could be like yeah all right company is zero which is good <laughs> no, i just like it oh two two i wonder who the two is it does it count myself it may count myself it's a cigar Cigar. Yes. Sagar. Sagar. Misty. What's yeah. What's up, Liam? Hey, nice to see you. Hey, Everybody's in the you? house. I love it. Hey. Cool, cool. Nice to see you. Oh, okay. We got some viewers. Um, What's up, Adam? Nice to see you. Uh, Cool, cool. So, yeah, we got a decent amount. I mean, so you've been a business owner, right? And yeah. networking has, I, I feel like a lot of people, if you've been in business for a long, it's such a core part. It makes so much easy things so much easier. I mean, what do you have to sort of add on to that? It's necessary. Um, if you don't have people to talk to, people to give you referrals, or for you, for even for you to give referrals, and then really kind of doing it wrong, right? Yeah. Especially on the small business side, especially on that side, because if you don't have people to to push you up and for you to be able to push them up, um, you're missing out on a huge opportunity that is sitting right there all you have to do is go talk to some people and so like networking events in particular are really really valuable and an opportunity for small business owners to stretch their their network without necessarily having to go do things like you know grow the net, your network posts or whatever um yeah they you those do work but they're yeah. they work differently right you got to sift through things after you're all done whereas when you go to a networking event you know right away whether that's going to be a valuable connection or not yeah um what about you? No, I mean, for me, uh, you know, I want to add on to that. Like, yes, business is a big part of networking. But I feel like another thing as a business owner is even having other business owners to discuss the issues you're going through to kind of just talk about, hey, is this something you experienced? Even as a sanity check, I remember, like, we wouldn't even sometimes talk, you know, they tell, hey, 
you know, I'm fa facing this issue with a client. I could say, hey, you know what? I did this this way. And, you know, I'm saying, hey, I'm dealing with this issue. Or like, I actually, one of my friends has office space and that's sort of, I don't have an actual office, but sometimes if I needed to actually physically meet a client, he gives it to me. And then when he needs help, like I'm there for them. So it's like, it's a mute, it, it just goes, there's so many benefits to networking and so many connections. It's just, I've had, ne I've had connections I made years ago that like, you know, we just stayed in contact and now it's like, wow, you know, now it's coming. And it's like, you can't predict something. You, you can't say, Hey, I met this guy and three years later, I'm going to be able to get a deal. It just happens. It's just very organic. You probably always had some form of good communication with that person, right? I mean, you've always yeah, been able yeah. to talk and have conversations. So, I mean, in a way, in a, from a gut check perspective, you kind of do know that there's someone worth keeping around, yeah. but you may not know why, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I completely agree with you. I think that there are so many positive reasons for you to know people beyond just what your network is to continue to grow that. I love the the resource side of that, you know, as a, a sounding board to be able to talk about the, the issues that companies are facing, whether it's right now or in the past or, you know, taking experiences and being able to apply it to your own business. I think those are all really valuable traits of, of having a strong uh, connected network. Yeah, no, and I, I link, we're doing a uh, networking event, nothing virtual on Wednesday regarding um, mental health. So feel free to come by. Uh, I'd love to sort of have you. And uh, I'm not paying $1,000 for a chair. No way. So look, mo so <laughs> man, I'm pretty sure your office chair is probably like a thousand bucks. And look, now I'll justify a thousand dollars chair, right? If you go for some of these higher chairs, there's goes into back support, goes into all that. Like there's some, they say the most important things, right? your mattress, anything that separates you from the ground. So your <laughs> shoes, your mattress and your tires, right? A lot of people, you want to cheap out on tires. And it's like, you, you're, especially now you're, we're sitting like eight, 10, 12, 14 hours a day in yeah. that chair. And these are things that slowly affect your posture. They slow, like right now my butt hurts, right? Just from <laughs> sitting like, dude, I probably sit like 10, look, 60 days, 10 hours a day. That's like 600 hours. So think about it. If you're paying a dollar per hour, right? Two dollars per hour to make sure you prevent something happening in the future. That's sort of how I look at it, right? It's it makes Good a big difference, that, right? So if you spend about two thousand, say you work from a computer desk at home in particular, you're yeah. averaging on the low end, on the, the average side, about two thousand hours a year. That's how you calculate yeah. forty hours a week, right? So yeah. and even uh, if half that, that situation, then all of a sudden yeah. it's only fifty cents an hour. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's assuming you sit the whole time. You know, maybe there's stand up and all that, but even a thousand hours it's like right and you know what we're probably sitting because we're doing more hours especially in the beginning especially during this time so it's like just one of those things is my sound good yeah, yeah, yeah good. Good. okay but it's just those those types of things they just make such a difference and you know the real big thing is it's like years down the road when it affects your posture it affects how you sit because dude i fell on my tailbone two years ago and it still hurts <laughs> and that was like two years ago i still regret it i was like damn it like it's crazy. There's it's nothing crazy. worse than that, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that it's like that funny bone, and then yeah. you know, the, all those are right up until you actually break a bone or you know, pull yeah. muscles. So, so like, um, uh, Adam asked a great question. He said, "At networking events, how do you guys recommend getting engaged if you're a bit more introverted?" A lot of people have a misconception that you have to be able to talk to every single person there, and you have to run through the room and meet everyone and follow up with everyone. You don't have to do that. Even if you can have one, two, or three meaningful, deep conversations with people that you vibe with, that's perfectly fine. And I've had, you know, sometimes I go to a networking event and it's really just to meet that one person, that one person that makes a difference, that one person that, like, I met someone three years ago at a networking event and we connected on LinkedIn and then we had a call things two years later and then we followed up and then now it's materializing into something that's really going to benefit me. And, uh, you know, it just benefit me, but it's not like I, I thought of it like that. So, I mean, what do you, what do you have to add to that as like an, if you're an introverted person? I would say get really, really good at learning to read body language. Um, mm. So there are a couple signals for closed loop body language. Um, one of them is the position of feet, right? Yeah. So if somebody has both of their feet, you know, the, say two people are in a conversation and both of their feet are facing each other. That means yeah. that it's a closed loop conversation. Yeah. They're not expecting anybody else to come into that conversation. Yeah. Another one is 
an open loop signal would be is mm. if someone had one of their feet kind of pointing out or both of them had their feet pointing out of the room. That means they're open to accepting other people into that conversation. Same things with things like putting hands in pockets or crossing their arms or yeah. hands on their hip. Those are all closed signals, right? So they're they're not as they're not going to be as open to uh, you know bringing in additional people into the conversation because that's kind of a terse situation that's uh, yeah. in place. But again, if you know if somebody's arms are speaking and and moving around while they're talking, open communication. Same thing with their shoulders back. Those are all open communication. So body language will really tell you a lot about uh, the conversation, the tone of that that group. Um, we'll also tell you whether it's worth getting involved in. And those are things you can learn before you go in and, you know, yeah. practice them. And then you can use those yourself to get better at being open to communicating with other people and kind of inviting people to speak to you rather than having to go to them to have the conversation. Um, yeah. So for introverts, I'd say that that's really a good opportunity to just brush up on some skills that you may not yeah. already have. No, and then uh, Kenneth says, you, you're you damn crazy. I'm not paying it. That. I didn't say you have to pay $1,000 for something, but just don't go cheap. Don't go, don't go cheap. That's all I'm saying. Spend a little more. You know, Don't go for the $10, $20 pairs that break off. In, right? Yeah. Go for Look, if you're paying for, especially once you get a little above, they last for years. I mean, mine was like 300 and, when I bought it. Yeah. And I mean, it lasted about shoes. five years. Huh? Yeah, and even dress shoes, when you're paying 300 to to 1000 they last the rest of your life. All you have to get is get them uh, shoe shined and you can replace the soles every once yep. every few years. You can do that. So it's like find a they good, add up find less, a good they add up to a lower right. cost. Huh? Find a good shoe, shoe repair guy. So I bought the last pair of shoes that I plan on buying for a long time. I think yeah, I made a big investment. Let's put it that way. But they're, yeah. they're holding up exactly how I anticipated them. For a long time there, I was buying $60, $70 pairs of shoes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they didn't have removable soles or any of that. Yeah, yeah. And they would they break down in six months, you know. And then you end up having to, you know, you paid twice now to have two pairs of shoes in a year. Yeah, so it might be one hundred and twenty dollars in that situation. And now all of a sudden, you know, it would have been worth buying the more expensive ones that can be resold. Because yeah, you don't have to go crazy high. Even two to three hundred, you're still getting yep. a very good pair of shoes. I mean, um, Misty says, "Thank goodness that my Apple Watch tells me it's time to stand up." Do, I like yeah, that. That's a big difference. And Adam says that's called getting old. So I, look, I want to slow down the process as much as I can, and I'm not going to get old because I didn't spend money on a quality chair. At least uh, you're doing your, your exercises because yeah. that keeps you young longer, I think. Yeah, and then Julian hey, says one conversation is enough. I don't look like rotating around. Around and same here. What's up, Nick Lozano? Um, uh, wow, I never thought of the feet as being closed communication signals. You know, it's it's subtle things. And I would say, look, obviously, this is more advanced. Sometimes just go out there with the intention of, hey, I'm looking to meet someone, add value. And you'll be surprised your body will show a lot of things. Later, when you want to get more advanced and all that, you can focus on these things. Um, hey, Clifford. And then Misty says the best thing when networking, I try to listen more than talk. Right? It's listening. People are under – people hate – the people who just nonstop talk, talk, talk. It's like, oh, God, I got to meet this guy. He's just going to talk about himself and talk about, uh, you know, all the stuff. Um, uh, Elizabeth has to go for a run. Point, Thank you. I think that that is valuable beyond just the networking side of things, yeah. right? Being able to listen and hear the full conversation and all the nuances behind it, as well as, uh, you know, some of the communication that's missed if you don't listen. And so many of us are raised to believe that silence in a particular situation is a bad thing, but really silence has all the power. Yeah. Because when you do speak, people listen. Yeah, no, same thing. It's just like, hey, you know, you're always afraid. Uh, you know, the quiet person speaks and they say something funny, the whole class laughs, right? The whole office laughs. It's like, oh, you know, you got him or her to speak. And then Nadia says a big, big thing, networking varies upon your geographic location. So obviously there are subtle things that you have to, cultural things that, you know, in some places they're, you know, more touchy feely, other places more back. It depends countries, regions, even time of day, right? You're networking at a work function. People are just going to be reserved, right? You're at a bar environment. People are going to be different. If you're a startup, right? Just different expectations, different environments. So just be aware of that. Um, use a standing desk. I, I see. I want one. They're just expensive. They, look, if I had the money, I'd get an ergonomic chair, standing desk. I'd get all that. So I definitely want to. Uh, that's the next one of the next purchases i really want i to can buy. vouch for that you were showing us the link last night yeah. 
And then Nadia <laughs> says the best thing. Um, yeah, Osama, it's all about balance. Balance between listening and communicating. Because communication is a two-way street. Nadia says in the if you have a great personality, certain rules wouldn't apply. And look, it's always there are always things. If you're dressed a certain way, you can get away with saying certain things. It's all about embracing your personality. Racing. What's up, Gary F? Nice to see you. Um, but yeah, I mean, networking has really changed recently, though, right? Because it's like, I can't do any physical events. Um, so how have you sort of networked recently? Well, I mean, we host networking events, so that helps. <laughs> no, but I, I will say that, you know, even for us, uh, I think it was a big surprise, right? So um, the the bringing this whole new platform into the picture changed yeah. the game as to how we do things, right? So like when before all of that, the closest thing to a virtual networking event that you could get was having a group Zoom meeting or a hangout or something along those lines. Well, the problem with that is that they get really crowded and then only a couple people speak, you know, two yeah. or three people speak. But when you have a hundred people on a call, that's a hundred people that are just having to listen to these two people speak and maybe, maybe they're not the right people to be having the conversation, but you know, everybody needs their mic and they, they're kind of like distracted by watching everybody's faces and reactions to the conversations taking place. Um, the way that, you know, we're doing it, it's broken up into the groups of six or, you know, less yeah. or sometimes a little bit more, but basically these smaller groups and that allows people to watch the people who are in the group, read their body language a little bit better and be able to have full blown conversations that, involve six people seven people whatever it happens yeah. to be. missy uh, says a very good thing she says she looks for people that are all by themselves and look uncomfortable and talks with them at networking events i like that you know that's it's and i'm gonna say go back to adam's thing if you're an introvert go talk to go to find that one person that's alone because i'm pretty sure they're most more likely to be introverted and go for smaller groups right don't go for Bigger group. And also, there are two routes. You could either go for a smaller group, get meaningful conversations, or go to a bigger group and stay silent and just say one or two comments. So there, there are different strategies. It depends on your comfort level. Um, just yeah. don't stand behind other people to listen to the conversation. Because Yeah, yeah. They, yeah you gotta, that, don't do that. not a good social signal. So Kenneth said, cut that animal off your head. I can't. The barbershops are closed. It's. I'm thinking about shaving it. My wife was asking if she could do it. I'm like, ah. Oh, Maybe yes, no, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you know my my sister cut my dad's hair, like the side. Like yeah, she yeah. did a great job. So I so gotta have her cut like, my side. Do clippers or scissors or how does she clippers, do it? Like the clippers. clippers and has a thing. So I'm yo, dude, I'm gonna do the sides, man. It's, there it's, you go. Because you know, cutting off the sides makes a big difference in terms it of it's just it like really a sharper does. look, and you know, as opposed to like brainiac and all that stuff. So the question. Uh, is he talking to you or is he talking to me or is he talking to both of us? Who? Kenneth. No, he said, Janai, take that. Oh, yeah. off your head. Your, <laughs> yours does not look like mine. is like, halfway up on the comments. I didn't even blow dry my hair. So it's like, look how long it's getting. And, you know, it's just all over the place. Uh, I like this comment by Jose. The introvert is an extrovert in silence. I like that. Uh, what happened to Pinterest? I have no idea what happened to Pinterest. Um, I have no idea. Um, and Travis doesn't have that problem. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, and Adam did the Corona cut last weekend. Um, so. Hey, it turned out good. I mean, I saw it. Yeah, no, his, his I thing. Like oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh somebody's finally, blowing up. Her. Finally. Hi. It's uh, been a while. I like this comment by Jose, the introvert. Hey. The introvert in I like that. Oh my God. Uh, I've got you. To Pinterest? I you. Had Sorry. Oh, I had you. you. Comments open, don't you? Yeah, I had you live in my ear. I'm like, why aren't you talking? Your mouths aren't moving. <laughs> How are you? I haven't seen you forever. I know. It's been so long. Yeah, no, it's been so it's been so long. No, it's good to see. You. I saw you kind and I sent the link. I was like, I hope she comes. I hope she comes. Yay. Yeah, I've got like back 20 minutes. Huh? It's back to the original group. This is how we all it is. Sorry, I want to get my lion in. Yo, hey. your lion. How's everything with you? Really good. Just, you know, I don't know. Just, I think isolation, as hard as it's been, it's been kind of good to sort of take, slow down and do the things like cooking and, you know, get back in inside yourself. Yeah. And you know what? Let's, 
to go back to the topic of networking, this is networking, right? Because I saw you comment, I told you come on, and how we met, because you're in Australia, right? So how do you met? Through an online platform. I just liked what you did. You know, it was cool. You put yourself out there. I supported you. You support me. And that's, it's just, right? It's it just goes like that. It's the best networking. Yeah. Amazing networking. I, I mean, I know so many people from all over the world now because of, yeah, networking online. Yeah. No, it's, and, just, it's just crazy how it, it just, like, there's so many um I actually work with someone on Reddit, and so I have a meeting with them on Wednesday. So it's it's just crazy how there are different channels of how same you can... with yeah with me and Instagram and just the yeah. more you put yourself out there, um, the more people see you and they're like, oh hey, and then yeah, you you just make friends all over the world. It's yeah. amazing. We're so lucky. So you know how one are of the you people... like that, how what? are you like my lives? Yeah, your Facebook lives. Oh, I've, I've got a, yeah, I've got a um, Facebook group. So I go live in there um, okay. every, yeah. every Friday. So um, it's just for women, though. Sorry, men. <laughs> We're not cool enough. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's just, yeah, it's just a safe space for women. It's pretty fun, actually. Yeah, but it's going so well. Good, good. I'm so happy for you. You, you know, you've been working at it for a long time. I know. I know. Right? I knew back when yeah. you were working full time and before you did this. So it's, it's it's just cool, just to kind of you know. I think that's one of the uh, the other things about networking is you see people's journeys, right? If you keep in touch, you maintain contact, you see where they were, and you see them grow. And I think that's one of the most beautiful parts. It's like so that. fun because I look now I'm at a point where I'm like, wow, I've been doing this for over a year now and I can see the benefit. So now I'm happy to like be cool and keep going because I know that in another year's time, it's just going to be even bigger because I've not stopped. So mm -hmm. that's it's so comforting. So anyone out there, if you're just like trying to start something, just keep pushing through. Don't stop. And then after like a year, you'll look back and you'll be like, whoa, yeah, so no, much. Consistency. So like, that... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. No, no, you go ahead. So it's like a slow boil pot, right? Like you don't realize the water's heating up around you until the water's boiling. And that's that's the business, right? So, you know, you pick up a little thing here, you pick up a little thing there. And then all of a sudden it's like you turn around and you're you're doing really well and things are going the way you want them to. But you don't notice it as it's happening. Yeah. Changes. I did yeah. not notice that I was wanted to give up a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Misty does a Facebook Live every Wednesday called Plank and a Quote. I like that. I like that. What? That's a, that's Plank a and a Quote? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, N Nadia says she's really proud of you, uh, Nadia Noel. Oh, thanks, uh, Nadia. Yeah, no, so it's, Thank you know, you. The, the consistency part is very important when it comes to networking a lot of people think it's like a one-time thing that you go that you just meet someone but no it's like jillian and i we've been on calls you message me during times i message yes. you we've been on multiple lives and you know we stay in contact it's not just hey one and done it's about maintaining same thing it's like think about a friendship just a, you know you can have different levels so and you know vj says the right thing networking is essential to your growth because look i learned so much from chris you know he actually created something for me it's like one day I hope Jillian sings like a custom made song for me. I don't know. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, yeah. Now I just got to meet a songwriter or something. And then, you know, boom, I'll be like, Jillian. They got, well, I, that's I the thing. Like, you know, like if someone asked you and said, oh, do you know anyone that might be able to sing this simple jingle or whatever? Yeah. You could, you could totally refer them to me. <laughs> well, I, 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 look, you don't have to tell me. I, don't, I wouldn't think of anybody else. I wouldn't think of like, you know, like, that it's always cool when you're very good at what you do and you do something unique because it's not like I, someone's going to ask me that oh, I need someone to sing. I'm not going to be like, oh, who do I know that sing? Because, you know, you forget a lot of people. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, I'm I gonna mean, be like, wait, hold on. I got to add this plus one in WhatsApp because it's an Australia number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Kelsey says, you know, uh, you know, I met Kelsey through this live show. I've met great people, including all of you and Ray, uh, you know, says networking is key and it's all about showing up consistently then that's how people get to know you right you got to keep on showing up and add value and continue yeah and be be kind and nice and who you are 
like on on the outside as you are behind the scenes you know I think I think why we've connected and we've stayed connected is because how we show up online is actually how we are if you send me a message I reply like I don't yeah. reply just to my comments and then get a hundred messages and just leave it yeah um, Bitcoiners. sorry what do you say to the Bitcoiners yeah <laughs> I don't get them they really? don't message you know what it me. Is? I'm going to tell you, there are forums that sell like LinkedIn accounts. They're like, hey, these are verified LinkedIn accounts with X number of followers and you pay it. And someone sells a guy like, hey, here's a guy on how to make money on LinkedIn. And you just need one person to invest this much and you make this much. And then in some air, in some country, you know, it's honestly, they feed on people who don't know any better. Right. Because they mm -hmm. tell them, hey, use the profile photos from this area. And that's why they all have the same formula. It's not. It's all different people. The reason I'm asking is because I don't respond. To them. No, like, I don't. I don't respond. Why? I yeah. I, I, <laughs> as as much as I say, I res I respond to people who have actually taken the time to get to know me and take you know comment on my things and um yeah. So yeah, that's part of networking. You can't just send out a message and then oh I've networked. That's not that's not networking. No, that's that's you not. Know, I get a lot of people and the thing is you got to put if you you're messaging someone out of the blue you have to put some level of effort into it whether it's because you know that person has a problem that you can solve whether you know you've read enough about the person that you can say hey I love this F I listen to you on this XYZ or I really love what you're about because then it's organic it's authentic and you have to do something like that or else it's just not going to work especially yeah, and people who are really busy and that's a game changer because no one does that. I don't know the last time that anyone has done that to me. No, yeah. no. I get a lot of messages like, hi, how are you? Or, yeah. you know, uh, thanks for adding me to your network. And it's, it's like, I actually get kind of annoyed when people send that message instead of just leaving it blank. Yeah. You know, because it's, it, it's a copy block, right? There's, yeah. there's a place for copy blocks and that's not it. You're trying to get to know that person. So like at the very least have something interesting to say to that person or question or whatever it happens to be that's not just the same thing i see a hundred times a day right um yeah. take some make some effort especially if you really do want to talk to to that yeah. person so so i mean i nadia say hey nice to see you uh nadia gotta go thanks for stopping by and love you, you know, nadia jeanette says networking has been like making new friends and i think that's what you should do you should try to just become friendly with people you know friends to some degree um, Adam has a nice thing. I reverse sell them marketing and sales training. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to be like, Hey, I'd rather, I don't sell me marketing service. I want to sell them to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got something you've never heard of before and you're going to love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, I love that. I love that. So, Hey, what's up, Gabriel? So for all of you, just, you know, just as a reminder, we're having a LinkedIn virtual in what, what is it? 48 hours, something like that. Like in, in two days. Um, so feel free to come by. Uh, I'm posting the link. Oh, wait, hold up. I got to post a link. And, you know, I just really want to just connect with you guys. And it's, if you don't want to connect with me, you can go to other tables and talk to other people. So don't think that it's <laughs> just me. Um, you know, Chris is going to be there. You know, have some other people going to be there. So feel free to share to one or two people. And I'm just really looking to make connect. Are, do you think you can make it, Jillian? Yeah, oh, I, yeah okay, I didn't I'll come to the last one. I'll have to come to this one. Yeah, so Wednesday, it must be Thursday, my time. So I'll give you, I think it, it the platform changed, adjusts the time, right? Or we got to put the time for Australia. I think we need to start putting international times in there more. Oh, because... You know what I'm going to get? I got to get the international clock on my wall because it's I, just I, mentally, I got to know the time for like yeah, I, I got to know it. I just got to have it and be like, oh, okay, it's, oh. it's too much. It's like, okay, what's the time zone? But the way I'm going to have to label it, I can't. I'm not going to be able to label it based on, like, um, you know, like London and Hong Kong and all that. It's going to have to be by the three letter code that's like EST and like PFP yeah. and HKT yeah. or whatever, HKG or whatever Hong Kong is. And like, I think that's going to be how I have to do it. But I, def I agree yeah. with you. And I'm probably going to need like six or seven clocks. Yeah. You know, um, Nate from Facebook says it's oftentimes difficult to network when many people no longer listen to understand, but merely to give a response. I was curious to hear convos about the thoughts of power of collaboration, you know, and you know what the thing is, I'm going to tell you networking isn't easy. It takes effort. It takes consistency. But the beauty is 
yes, you'll meet a lot of people who aren't the right fit. You will, but the people you do meet that are right fit are powerful. Like, yeah. you know, like how did I meet my mentor Suzanne? It's at a networking event, and there were like eight. There were probably like eighty people at that event. It was like pitches, and I pitched. She liked my pitch, and I liked her pitch, and it grew. And now she's like my mentor, and. If not, she saves me like probably like tens of thousands of dollars because to get a professional with her experience to get that level of advice, it's just, you just can't, right? It's just 20 years of experience in a certain industry that I want to, that I'm breaking into, that I touch to learn about it just makes such a big difference. So it's like, again, it's like, even if I've networked for years just to get that one connection, that's enough to be life-changing. And that, right, Chris and I, how do you meet on LinkedIn? It's just... And then from here, we're doing lives together and we're running events together. And now it's like we talk for hours a day. It's like that's the power right. of networking. It's like and, you know, Jillian, I, I, I like seeing I haven't seen your post. I've been so busy that I haven't been. I saw one today. It was blowing up. Really? <laughs> What'd you post about? Oh, uh, I because I I have my four weeks to work with me. Yeah. So in June, yeah, so I've got three spots left. And you get a free, you get a meditation, a, a personalized meditation when you work yeah. with me, which is so cool because I love making meditations, which is something I never thought I'd do, but yeah. it's amazing. And then the Ray, winding road we take, right? Yeah, so good. So Ray says, I felt the key to networking is being authentically curious about them. I think 100%. And the beauty is when you're curious about other people, you learn so much. You learn about what they do. You learn about their experiences. You learn about their struggles. You learn so much because look, all like even for my business, I've learned so much from other people. I've avoided a mistake because of what I've seen others do or what they told me. And it's like that itself says a lot. And it's like when you care about what other people do, you care about their interests. It's just like, you see that other people start caring about you. I find a lot of people, they're like, it doesn't work. It does, And they're only purely doing it for them. They're only thinking about, hey, if you think of everything as a transaction, people will feel that, right? People can right. sense that in your body language. People can see through you. Something and when you build when you build relationships, like people, like I'll go out of my way to help the people who are friends, basically. Yeah. And then for free, I don't, I'm not going to yeah. ask. You know what I mean? So- yeah, you get you you'll get looked after if you look after people. Yeah, no, I mean, Chris, you were saying something. Yeah, so one of the things that I kind of look at when I go to a networking event, and this was even in the in-person networking events that I go to, yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. I always tried to build, you know, look out for people that might be a good fit for my mastermind group. And if anybody doesn't know what a mastermind group, it's just basically a group of like five to eight people that are awesome people they're just like the best of the best that you've ever met yeah. and then you kind of try to get them introduced to the other people that you work with and then eventually you know you're able to collaborate in those groups and so like we've got a mastermind group that's running right now it's Janaya, matthew and sid um and we're doing some awesome things but it's only because the four of us have very different skill sets and we all work really well together and so um we wouldn't have had that if we hadn't have been trying to develop a relationship. And it, some of them started out as one-on-one. -on -one. I know Matthew and, and, um, and Janiad were, were good friends for a long time. And then Sid and, and Janiad were good friends. And I, I knew Sid um, kind of independently of Janiad. And then all of a sudden we realized that they were connected. And then, you know, Matthew so and I, it's crazy, right? So yeah. that's maybe something to keep in the back of your mind. Don't make it the only reason you go to these events, but you know, yeah. that's kind of how I look for people in general, right? Is like, that's the trend. If you are going to think about it from a transactional standpoint, it's got to be mutual, right? And that's a mutual relationship, that mastermind group. No, I think 100%. And then um, Philip says a wonderful thing. I Being authentically you, don't put on the front, you know, just don't, you know, purely go that I'm this, I'm that. Because look, even if you do connect with people, you have to keep up that front to maintain that. And then once you drop that front, uh, you're like, wait, too hard. you're not as rich as you say you are. You're not that person. And, you know. Too hard. Oh, yeah, God. No, it's it's stories awesome. we, we ran across people like that. Yeah. And then thank you, Sunday, for the amazing comment. I really appreciate it. And then, you know, Sit Sitali or Sitlali. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, networking can be so exhausting. I always approach it with a piece of information I 
feel the person might be interested in or referring to an article they wrote or offer some other referral to someone they might have. I never ask for anything and it takes so much stress. And you know what? The thing is, I tell people also be, you have to do what's right for you, right? If you're introverted, some of these events can be very exhausting. If you're busy, just find a level. Maybe it's once a week, maybe it's twice a week, or maybe you might have a process like, hey, I call three friends a week. It, you know, everybody's going to have a different level that they can maintain and it's perfectly fine, but zero, uh, something is better than nothing. Also challenge yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, I would say early on, I was a super shy person. Super. Yeah. And I but go to a networking events where you have something in common. Like networking yeah. events don't necessarily have to be like, this is a business event. It could be like, I love this game or something. And yeah. you go there and you meet like-minded people and then, hey, I actually have a business that could use your services. Yeah. Bang, you've networked, but it's something, you've got something in common with the people. Yeah. That's building relationships and networking. You don't doesn't necessarily have to be That's really like, great. Yeah. big to no. business. I think yeah. like hobbies, you know, you network mm. at, like if you have like a Pilates class, Zumba, yeah. Yeah. you know, yoga, all these different activities, rock climbing, it's book clubs it's you know that'll make it easier to start conversation because it's like yeah we both like the same thing it's like when you go to a park with the dogs the dog park you end up meeting so many people because it's like you've got a dog you've got a dog we're friends because you've got got dogs dogs are playing like yeah you talk about the dogs you've got the focuses on the dogs or the hobby or the thing you're interested in um so yeah i think that helps no, and then another point, sometimes just, like, once you establish some, send, you know, on LinkedIn, send a message, you know, ask, send something nice, and then if, you know, engage with the person, and take it offline. Don't just be connections that just interact. Like, today, I actually had a call. I spoke with one hour to my LinkedIn connection. So I spoke with Anthony Savellas for, like, 15 minutes, and then maybe 30 minutes, and then I spoke to Joe Lalji for 45 minutes, and, you know, we're just talking, and... It's just crazy. It's, um, you know, I just met him online and it's like, he's giving me so much advice because he's, you know, in the recruiting industry and it's just, again, it's just organic. And it's like, I didn't meet them purely because I'm like, oh, this guy's going to give me so much advice. It's just, I liked him. He liked what I did. I follow him on TikTok. I always like all his videos. Did you make a video on TikTok recently? I didn't see any videos. That you hey. made. Your videos are so good. I love it. because like- I stopped because I, I need to focus <laughs> on my business. So I, I stopped. Yeah. It was take. I couldn't think of any ideas. I, and it does take a bit of time, I have to admit. Time. But, yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely get back into it. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know. Did you see what BJ said? What did she say? About... Uh, I always tell introverts if they're going out to network, do it for 70 minutes and talk to five people wearing a specific or a certain uh, color and make it fun. Oh, I love that. I, great I idea. like that. I, there are always little games that you could do and they're always, yeah. It's I would definitely, yeah, hey, I am actually, um, I'm actually like an introverted extrovert. So when I'm okay. in big, yeah, it's really weird. So when I'm in big, like networking events, I don't like to go around. I don't yeah. at all. I usually like might meet one or two people and I start up a conversation and then they want to like go meet other people and I'm like, no, you stay with me. I really like actual like really deep conversations. I don't really like talking about surface stuff. So that's okay. I think that's – and I've actually gotten some really good connections because they've found out that I sing or whatever, so they'll come up to me and they'll be like, oh, Wow, and then you have a deeper conversation. Whereas if you're like going around the room and not making any like deep conversations, no one's going to remember you. Yeah, so no. it's okay to like only speak to like one or two people, I think. Yeah, and I think especially start small. Don't start off, hey, I'm going to talk to 50 people, right? Start. Yeah, like, it would be too company. overwhelming. I'd like freak out. <laughs> I wouldn't go. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, don't hey, put too Janae, much pressure on. Yeah, Janae, nice to see you. And Common Ground, and then, Look, it gets easier over time. Eventually, you just realize how to connect with people, how to add value, how to have better conversations. Um, yeah, no, I mean, everybody, like, everybody has something different. Everybody has something. But it's, like, one of those things that I tell people is once you have a network that you've built over 10, 20, 20 years, it's very hard for someone to just come in. You have this unique value because if you think about the most valuable thing in the world right now is data right 
data, these com- all these companies, right? They make so much money because they have data, whether they can sell you ads or they can do all these things or whatever, right? It, it, and right, that's why I like these data scientists, right? It's all sifting through data. And why, so what does networking do? It gives you access to more data, right? It's, and networking actually lowers the cost of information in the sense that, hey, if I need a singer, I don't need to go on Google and search up singer who sings well and can do lots of cool videos. <laughs> I have Jillian, right? I have her. And it's like, hey, if I want to ask about industrial marketing, I have to, versus going on Google, then I have to sift who's good, who's not, who's like selling you fake stuff. It's right there. That's just immense value. And, you know, whatever, however you want to quantify it, it has a lot of value. Mm-hmm. And if I were not in that position, it would cost me a lot of money, right? It would cost me a lot. And then even whatever, I have to pay you guys. It doesn't matter. I know I'm getting quality. So it's like, you know, whenever you have a problem and someone can solve it, that's worth a lot. And I think a lot of people really forget that. And then Misty says she believes in the power of three. I try to meet three people. Yeah, nice. That's good. Three is a good number. Three. And then VJ says she got to go. Five quality connections better than 50 without quality. And I 100% agree. It's, um, yeah, on multiple occasions, uh, you know, he says sends the personalized request. And you just learn a lot. Personal and yeah, someone says not a thousand souls, 10 high value ones go such a long way. And you can hold on, so many comments. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I actually to... have a meeting, I have a meeting now, so I have to go okay. because Thank I'm meeting, meeting Olivia, who's also on LinkedIn, who we met through LinkedIn. So, and we're having, we're in our own little mastermind. Nice. So, you know, so you want to know something funny? I met someone on LinkedIn. So, I, I have a meeting with someone who we messaged on LinkedIn who worked for LinkedIn, but I didn't meet them on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I have three connections from LinkedIn. Well, no, I have four. One I met on LinkedIn, but I have three connections and two I met in person. That's One so- didn't freaking accept my connection request and I met him in person. I just felt that was like I was offended. You worked at LinkedIn and it's still sitting. I'm like, that's like, come on, dude. That's messed up. I asked you didn't accept it's all right you could have said hey no i only connect with people i know whatever and but yeah but the other guy accepted but it's just kind of funny that that is hilarious being like an employee at linkedin and like just being bombarded yeah it would be really hard yeah it would be weird yeah you get questions when are they doing this fix this Oh, that would be the worst. Oh, fix this. Oh, why is this, fix this? Why is this thing taken away? Why, why I can't I post this? Like a thousand percent in the last two weeks. <laughs> so, so another thing for networking, do not ask someone something they've probably been asked a thousand times because they're just tired of answering. Oh, absolutely. Like, I hate that. Yeah. You know, it's like, don't ask someone on LinkedIn. Just like, talk to them gonna, normally. Yeah, talk, talk to, to people normally. normally. Like, talk to them about their life. Yeah, not their work necessarily. Specific, you know, not just like, hey, you know, like, hey, someone like, for example, I'm a resume writer. Everybody asks me, hey, can you read my resume without even ever knowing them, without anything, and you do it, and they never. I want you. Let's say you do do a review, they never talk to you again. So it's like then you just feel I don't know. You just feel so used. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get questions a lot all the time, and people don't reply. Like I take the time to like give my knowledge and then they don't reply and i'm like wow i'm trying to be nice here that stop ruining it for other people yeah yeah so all right so th- but thank anyway, you so much I better for the time. Go. get your meeting have it was fun so and good to chat we'll catch okay, up so again I, soon. I, I put the link in the comments yeah, I, yeah I saw that i'm gonna cool. come yeah okay, for sure cool. nice to see you bye bye, bye. i saw then, uh, brian was here too so hi brian yeah, what's up brian hi. nice to see you uh, oh, you know what, Brian? Hold Brian. on, hold on. I gotta give this guy a link. I gotta give this guy a link. Where, where, where are you at? So let me drop a link. Hopefully, you can come by. We bring um, it. Let me see. Hold oh. on. I gotta do this. I'll see when it comes in. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just you gotta you gotta be a little different. You gotta put a little. You gotta put more effort. Um, I asked my LinkedIn wound socket Twitter. I gotta check that. They tend to answer me there. Um, Sorry. my favorite network intro. What's new and exciting? I like that. Um, link and then Charlie asked, "Can you ask one of them how the algorithm works this month?" And then he's like, "They don't even." Brian said, "They don't even know." Uh, <laughs> I can imagine they could. You know, the thing is, when you work for a big company, 
there like I someone told me that there was one person that they know. Oh, he said I mean my LinkedIn questions on Twitter and they answered there. So I'll check. Um yo, can yeah, you tag yeah, what chat, who you right? tag Twitter and who chat. responds? Yeah. The I use the Twitter chat or the Twitter, yeah, I think it's a Twitter chat, which sometimes I don't really like it because it's like sometimes it's a very public thing to yeah. get them, but I, I think the last time I had a big problem, I messaged them through yeah. that and they were able to get back to me and that was pretty yeah. useful. But um yeah, it's kind of interesting that they were they were responding through Twitter of all places, but and not LinkedIn. <laughs> no, because you know what? Honestly, I could imagine because you know there's a LinkedIn help thing, right? I could imagine you're just getting and I could imagine that like 99% of them are just like things like uh refresh your browser, update, yeah. do you not do this? Do you not know how to use a computer? Did you press this is your mouse plugged in you know like, like no i haven't i haven't seen any notifications for a week there's probably something wrong because i get yeah. uh, here whatever you know it's just yeah and you know something, you just know just know like, something look, wrong. it just happens right and oh so what i was gonna say is i knew someone who worked at linkedin no no i knew someone who knew someone who worked at linkedin and he said that person was just responsible for the rules on tag jail right that they were like the one responsible just if you got you couldn't tag or you know you're in LinkedIn jail, whatever that thing is. So it's like each person works on it. It's, these algorithms get super complex, yeah. AI driven, constantly modified, self-learning, then they have to adapt, right? There's no way like one person may just focus on one aspect, right? Some one I know some people focus on spam and some other people may focus on certain types of spam other times fake accounts that are posting other times are just like making sure people are not posting publicly you know doxing people or you know hate all that stuff um i reapplied for linkedin live last night so to apply for linkedin live uh misty just apply google linkedin live application it pops up it's it's it sometimes you get approved quickly sometimes not they tend to go in batches but um i got lucky i've had it since like late august and you know i've Hold on, how many hours? So this I have done officially over 110 hours. Nice. This episode. This episode. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Congratulations. That's a that's a big milestone. Yeah. No. I mean, it's just it, look. I would have done more. It's just I'm you know super busy. But I do want to get oh, up to a lot point. more coming real soon. More to come yeah. on that. But so, can't talk about it just yet. But it's coming. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. And no, I mean, it's getting super. Hopefully one day I want to get to a point where I, you know, I have enough income stream that I can, you know, go live like, Hey, three times a week for two, three hours and answer questions and, you know, have like different topics and different webinar things. Oh, I was going to say, if anybody wants to contribute to the show, um, whatever, two bucks a month, three bucks a month, anything goes and everything really goes back to the show equipment, um, patreon.com slash no degree. I Ideally, I'd like to make enough through Patreon that I could say, hey, I can dedicate X number of hours per live per week. And I really want to be consistent because I I generally enjoy the conversation and I learn so much just even through the comments. So uh, thank you. You know, thank you, Philip. He, you know, he he's a contributor. So I appreciate that. And Misty, good luck. Let, you know, if we're not, I think we're connected. Um, we definitely are. Uh, but, you know, feel free to send me a connect, you know, send me a message if, you know, you really get value out of the show. Um I mean, what else would you have to say on networking that we didn't cover? Just keep doing it. It's, I will say, especially for people who don't do it on a regular basis, and I even faced it in the past. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story, actually. Here. Yeah. This, this will be entertaining for a lot of people. My very first um, networking event that I ever went to was at like this brewery. And um, I knew that it was a pretty hot networking event. Somebody, several people had recommended that I go there and I just started my company and been up and running for like a year or two. And I'd never been to a networking event like that. And it was totally cold. I didn't know anybody. So I, I told myself, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do a lap. And I walked in and I saw somebody I knew and I literally ran back to my car and drove away. I was terrified. Something you told me about that. crap out of me. I kept going. And I had that happen maybe one or two more times. And then I finally just was like, you know what? I'm going to start talking to people. But even to this day, I, I tried to go to one in Grand Rapids here a couple months ago. And I'd been out of the, the networking game for a long time. And I, you know, I check it out. So it does happen. If it does happen, don't beat yourself up over it. 
actually keep trying to go yeah, because trying. there is fear in meeting new people and especially in completely you know new and bizarre environments but the the payoff is way worth it guys it's yeah. um you know and and virtually what's cool i will say this virtually it's so much easier right because you have a screen and, a, and an internet connection in front of you between you and that person and so it doesn't seem as intimidating that's yeah. the way i perceive it anyways and it seems like a lot of the people that we've talked to who've come to these events have said the same thing it's just it's, once you're in and kind of popping around the different yeah. tables it's not as intimidating because you don't feel like you're going to be as judged as much if you don't say anything because it's more normal not to say anything on, on a virtual environment. Yeah, no, I mean, it's look, but sometimes the hardest part is the actual what you think and all that stuff. Once you're there, it's definitely not yeah. as bad. Um, yeah, so, so some, you know, Adam says you have to be in networking for the long haul. Ray mm -hmm. said, don't be a douchebag. Yeah, just be nice. Just uh, <laughs> simple. You know? So easy um, to do, you know. It's not a short-term strategy, and I'm sure I know just doing most things. People, you know, for me, look, I will tell you, for me, <laughs> live is just shoot. It is yeah. for me just coming out, but it's also because I spent a lot of time working on my public speaking skills. It's I spend a lot of time reading, so it's not like that. Hey, I'm just random. You know, it's, I speak on topics I know about. I, you know, I just try to keep myself well read. Misty has a great point. Though. One other thing I would add is people to have a mini commercial. So yeah, you gotta have like your like your 15 second pitch, you know, you're like your 30 second and you know, your 90 second. Um, that's just definitely knock it out and then go right into your regular conversation. Don't remember it. Yeah. So, uh, Ray says, I used to beeline for the bathroom and reappear. You look, sometimes if you gotta t look, if you gotta leave for like five, 10 minutes to just relax, to um, get a drink, all that stuff. I mean, you know, look, so Charlie says, please, please tell us more about this personal commercial. Charlie, this is all you gotta do. You, all you got to do is you got to go in there and you got to say, my name is Charlie Powers and I make powerful art. Boom. They're going to be like, what? That's, uh, that's your commercial. I guarantee you. Or you can say, I make powered up art because that's what he does. So, and it's great. Uh, it's great. And, you know, I mean, for when people overthink that 30 second elevator pitch too, like, you know, you know what you do really well. Your, your unique selling proposition, why you are trying to meet new people, right? So, yeah. you know, if you do virtual networking events, or you own a company that does marketing or whatever, go in and say, hi, I'm Christopher Nesbitt. I own network Nesbitt Marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, we do industrial marketing. Make sure that you've got your your specifics yeah. figured out. We're looking, I'm looking to meet this, this type of person, and then go right into your regular conversation. You know, you don't need yeah. to close it. It's not about closing that relationship on your products or services necessarily in that pitch. Yeah. It's just letting them know what you do. And then, you know, the faster you can get things casual and lighten up a little bit or let them give you their pitch, yeah, you're going to be in a lot better shape. No. Um, no, and it's like, don't, I think going in with, no, with, with that expectation. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the more you network, the better you get at identifying things that are worth your time, things that you're sort of going for. And then Adam says the unique selling proposition is the technical term. And, you know, thank you for sort of saying that. It's... Look, you just get better at it. I So there's one formula I tell a lot of people. It's I, you know, who or my company, a variation of the word help, who you help and what you help them achieve. Simple as that. So you say, for me, I help people without college degrees. That's who I help. Find meaningful jobs. Simple. Right? Oh, so you always want to frame sure. things on what you do for others. Because what you do for others is more important than what you do, right? A lot of people make the mistake of saying, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm this. Then you're defining yourself by your role and you're sort of pushing people away. Whereas a doctor, you say, I help people get healthier. A lawyer says, I help people get real estate, you know, help their legal needs. I help people, you know, stay out of jail. I help people, you know, defend themselves. Because what happens is I don't know anyone that needs a doctor right now. But I do know people that need help with their health. I do know people, right? So it's like, I don't need, I, you know, same thing. I help people lose 15 pounds in three weeks or less. I don't know anyone who necessarily needs a personal trainer, but I do know some people who need to lose yeah, weight. So it's like, right. it's just the mindset that you kind well, of frame them and you feed them. Marketing too, right? This is a really big concept right now in marketing that a lot of companies are doing wrong. And that's I centric versus customer centric, right? So yeah. you, in the situation of networking, it's me versus you. Who's going to be, who's going to be more interesting to that person? Is it going to be me? No. 
going to yeah. be the person you want to try and get the conversation focused on them or helping them. Like you, that's what is it called? The uh, altruistic, right? Yeah, yeah. If you focus on making sure that you're helping somebody else, people are going to like you a lot more than if you're talking about yourself and how you help yourself all the time. Yeah, and then um, yeah, know who you're, who you are, what you do, who your ideal client is. Um, that really sets yourself apart. And then Charlie, I like this. He's going to walk in networking events, holding one of my paintings on his shoulder. I go, oh, <laughs> look, there's so many things you could wear a hat. Yeah, Charlie has such a cool logo, a hat with your logo. You can wear a shirt with the thing, a light. There's so many ways. And then Misty has two commercials. So it's like, sometimes you may need two commercials because I have one that I'm talking to HR professionals and one that I'm talking to job seekers. Another way that you, this one's tougher. And it gets a little more unique is when you really get creative. So another way is you can say, for example, if someone's like a therapist or someone's like a mindset coach, you could say, I'm a personal trainer for your brain or I'm what? the, you know, it's that, that's when you get really creative. Cause then you're like, wait, what do you mean? How do you you're like, well, I don't know how you go to the gym. Well, I sort of give you mental exercises to build up resilience. And so there are other ways like, I create so Charlie could say I create powered up art. What do you mean? What's powered up art? Well, my name is Charlie Powers, and I create art that lights up. Right? You want to see a video? You want to see this? You know what Charlie could do? He could get little like cellophane business cards that have like a little plastic or wood frame or something with LEDs yeah. that are battery powered, yeah. and then just hand those out. That'd be that'd be so cool. Yeah, Charlie. So Charlie, you got a, a small version of your art. I think would be like a little. The bits in your pocket bits and pieces i think that would be good uh missy says she's uh you know that she supports creatives around stress management and again that's very good um name tags are cheap too that's not bad right a little pin a little you'd be surprised little things just go a long way they set yourself apart uh they do all that i mean let's slowly start to wrap up um yeah. i mean feel free anybody to sort of ask us questions you know, I appreciate all of you, you know, thank you for coming to the, the channel. And you know what? The beauty of these lives is I think the audience, thank you all you guys for just being providing tremendous value and just helping us out. Right. Just, I think yeah, I you guys were sort of fire in the comments tonight. Yeah. Oh no. Today's co today's comments are definitely fire. And that, yeah, Charlie, so you gotta, you gotta show us a video of a tiny card. And the thing is for your card, you don't have to give it out because I think Charlie's card, he could probably do QR code. True. Right, because it gets a little expensive. Because his car, if he makes right. that, it would be like very tough. But even he, if he yeah. just had something that he could be like, I make this but bigger. Yeah, yeah, know? I make this. That would be awesome. He's like, I make bigger versions of this. Yeah. You know, it's just like different things. I have a t-shirt. Yeah. I, so uh, Misty has a t-shirt. I have a t-shirt I got made that says the peace, calm, and tranquility coach. And uh, Kenneth says this is his worst compliment he's ever given. He just says you're ingenious, sir. I don't see any scrumptiously, deliciously, <laughs> edibly oh, tasty. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to yeah. see scrumptiously delicious and all of that. No, no, no. no I mean, you know what? I guess, look, that's probably a very good compliment because if when Kenneth uses few words, it must mean even greater than what he usually does. So you know, I'll take it that way. Uh, Usama says, I tend to introduce humor. Humor works so much. Very humor much. Humor is, it's, it's, you got to find your style. It's not easy. There's no formula. It's about, knowing what to say at the right moment and being comfortable with yourself and just being confident and the mix of it, it takes time, but I could, I could definitely see you doing it. So sort of any final words. Come join us. I put the link in the, the chat a couple of times, but come join us on Wednesday. I mean, uh, yeah. we've got uh, some killer speakers that are going to be speaking yeah. about mental health. Um, and we'll be talking about a little bit about mental health tomorrow night, I think. And uh, and then Wednesday night, it's going to be all the heaviest hitters from LinkedIn. You know, yeah. we've got Miguel Olive. We've got um, – Janaya knows the speakers better than I do because he was uh, the guy who went and reached out to most of them. But I know Seneca yeah, yeah. Williams is going to be there. Yeah, Seneca Williams, the uh, entrepreneur oh, therapist. Yeah. Teresa Quinlan, she has a show, uh, TQ. Uh, she knows so – like, she reads – textbooks on emotional intelligence so there's no one better and she does it for corporate teams you have joel algy you know very big on mental health we have um nicole she's going to give her tedx speech so that's going to be very interesting uh we have miguel olav so it's 
it's just such a cool uh, uh, panel. I'm super interested. Uh, so someone was, let's just really end it on this. Who is the most inter- interesting person you met networking? Really? Yeah. Um, I've got a good one, actually. Um, yeah. So one of the most interesting people that I ever met networking was the guy that invented the modem. And I'm talking about wow. the dial modem. Yeah. So his name is Casey Cowell. He actually lives in Traverse City, where I used to live up in Michigan, and it's a beautiful town. And he's got this massive house out there, but nobody knows he lives there, right? Unless you, yeah, you know, he lives there. But um, I went to a pitch networking event, and I pitched my 3D printing product development company. And afterwards, he just came up and said, handed me his card. He said, "I'd love to speak with you afterwards." And I looked down at the card, and I realized who he was. And then I tried. I went back and found him. Uh, and we talked for 10, 15 minutes and then we had a couple of other meetings who's, you know, we were working on trying to get him as a, uh, an investor. And I learned a really valuable lesson for him. Um, I'm really grateful for it. He taught me that if you're trying to get investment from somebody who has lots of money, don't back off because he was testing me this whole time. So he canceled a bunch of meetings. He didn't answer emails. He did all this stuff, right? He was playing these games, which is fine. He's got billions of dollars and I'm sure he's hit up a thousand times a day or more. Yeah. But, um, I have a friend who did end up getting investment from him and he said he must've gone through 30 canceled meetings and, you know, emails being dropped and all these things. Um, but yeah, so I got to meet the guy and and hang out with the guy that invented the modem and he was pretty, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had the filtering process that he literally has to make sure that he filters because I'm, you know, when you're a billionaire, like we're not even that rich and we probably get asked for money on LinkedIn all the time. So I could only imagine if you're like, a, you know, like a billionaire, you're getting asked like a million times more, right? It's just how it is. It's a real uh, you know, I will say that like, I, I was really impressed by the fact that he was just so real down to earth and he didn't, you know, uh, he, he wasn't afraid to show people that. Yeah. No, I mean, that you'd be surprised. A lot of people are just human, right? Um, we put them on, but, they're regular, just human who did great things, you know, who worked hard. Uh, Ryan Ecker says, I came at the right time. It's crazy that you met him. And thank you, Joseph. Um, Adam, looking forward to see you there. Uh, Misty, thank you. I want to personally thank you for all your comments and bring up all the things. I hope you found this really valuable. Charlie says, just want you all to know I love your face. I love your face, too. Um, <laughs> and I really appreciate it. So I put the link. Um, we're gonna, look, we're going to be doing a lot of events. We, we have a career fair on, on June 4th. So... You know, feel free to message me about that. If we're not connected, please send me a message. Look, if you if you're not at, look, any messages I appreciate. You know, anybody who watches this live, I you know I get value out of this. I'm gonna we're gonna go live tomorrow at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. is good for you. So tomorrow 10 p.m. we're gonna go live again. We're gonna focus more on mental health because I think it's a very important topic, and I you know I really want to have introduced that in you know to the event and cool. I mean, any final questions before we kick off? Hold up. Oh. We gotta do the song. Uh, hold up, do I have? It? I gotta see yeah, if I have. It. Can you can you do it through the overlay? Upload it through the overlay. So Damn, play. I should have done it. We gotta we gotta upgrade our quality. Uh, well, my quality. You know, you would have done it. You you know, you're good with that stuff. Let's yeah. see. Uh, oh, we can play the marketing trailer if you want. It's really good. I use it. You know my what? Let's let's do that. I, I, I think. It's here, all right. Hold up. Let me see. Go see. Let me see. Brand. Brand oh, You know what? Let's show this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. That's just hot. Hold up. Second again. Whew. That's just, I love it. I love it. Uh, hold up. Let me see. We gotta, so you know what I gotta do? I gotta have like a one minute thing at the beginning where the song plays and it's like yeah. things starting. I think that's definitely the way to go. Hold up. Let me see my podcast intro. Um, you do that. man, I really gotta get better at this. Hold up. So hold up before you guys leave. I just have you the song. It is sharp. I will say that they did a great job. So Rob House, check him out. He's freestyle. Let's go. Let's go. So starting. Tell me if the sounds good. Starting. 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 Yeah. It's good. So you got no degree. No problem. No problem. Any problem? We can solve. We got. LinkedIn insomnia keeps us evolving, going in the know.
flowing. Wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where I'm going. If you didn't know, now you know. Let's sing that again, everybody. No degree, no problem. Any problem, we can solve them. Link insomnia keeps us evolving. We're growing in the knowing. The wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where I'm going. No degree, no problem, any problem we can solve. Linked insomnia keeps us evolving. We growing in the knowing, the wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where I'm going. Yeah. Oh. Every time he posts a graph, I love it. We just play it. Cool. Peace out, guys. Appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, feel free. Hey, yeah, if you want the file, download. I, you know what? I'm gonna post it on YouTube, so yeah. we'll put it. So, appreciate you. Thank you, Ray, for all your comments. Looking forward to seeing you speak at the career fair. I don't know where tonight went. I think we're still alive, and it's I'm okay. crazy. I didn't end the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Such a big mistake. I've been at this for a while. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I had to come back in. So, 